Have you ever said or heard phrases like, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest warriors? Or maybe things like, you're not lonely, you have Jesus. Or going through trauma and hearing, well, this must just been a part of God's plan. Going through the grief or death of a loved one. Maybe this is just something God is using to teach you something. Well, if you've heard or said any of those things, which I think the majority of us have, we need to understand how harmful spiritual bypassing is. And spiritual bypassing is just using your faith or spiritual concepts to hide your reality, your experiences, and negative emotions that you're experiencing. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby Bowen. I am a certified trauma-informed Christian life coach. And today we are gonna be talking about the danger of spiritual bypassing. And I don't wanna scare you guys because I think we can all catch ourselves saying these things, but we have to be careful that we're not using these phrases or these verses to mask feelings that we have inside. I know many of you guys, because I talked to you, have been told things like, don't take anxiety or depression medication. Maybe you should just be praying harder. Maybe there is something flawed with your faith because you are still experiencing symptoms of depression and anxiety. And I just wanna assure you that is not appropriate and it is not at all the right thing that anybody should ever say. And so we're gonna be talking today about these phrases and how, especially when we grow up hearing these things, then we adopt them not only as slogans that we say to ourselves or to other people, but as thought processes that we have in our life. And so when we're in these kinds of situations, there's this feeling, this sense that, well, I just shouldn't be depressed because I have God. I should just pray harder and I should just feel better. Or I shouldn't be envious because, you know, well, look at all, all the things God's done for me in my life. Well, friends, I love you guys. And we have to recognize these aren't helpful for healing. And God doesn't want us to give these scriptural prescriptions and then stuff down these negative emotions. It's okay that you're feeling angry because something horrible happened in your life. It's okay if you're experiencing anxiety and depression. It shows us, hey, there's something going on beneath the layer here that we need to look into and we need to look for help in. And maybe that is through a coach or a therapist um, or medication. But I want to assure you that just pretending and writing off these issues isn't going to help. And I think if you've grown up in the charismatic or evangelical world where the gifts of the spirit are all over the place, when we're in these moments, we go to people and we, I need a prophetic word to feel better. I need this to feel better. And it's like, we're again going to these spiritual practices or concepts, which I believe that God still heals today, but I don't not going to run to somebody like I'm maybe used to have done this to get a word for my life so I can feel better about being anxious or depressed right now. I need to figure out, hey, why am I feeling this way? What is going on? Do I have an unresolved core wound in my life? And we've talked about what the core wounds are. We can link some videos down below uh, if you want to refresh on that, which is pretty much the six core rights God uh, intended for us to have, which is to feel unconditionally loved, accepted, provided for, belonging, freedom, and provision. And usually in childhood, we have a wound comes in. And if it's not dealt with, we adopt coping mechanisms in our life. And then we can run to spiritual concepts to feel better instead of going to the root and healing those things alongside God so that we just live whole lives. I want to start by reading a verse in Matthew 23, 4, and it says, they tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. When someone comes to you in a church and tells you with their spiritual superiority complex that you just aren't doing enough for God and that's why you're feeling the way you are. That is exactly what Jesus is talking about and rebuking in that verse. If you are dealing with grief, if you know somebody who's dealing with grief, you want to know some things that you could say that would be helpful. I am so sorry this is what you're going through. I am so sorry. Can I bring you a meal this week? Is there something that maybe you could watch their kids for them? Maybe you could do something productive to help them to show that you're there and that you're with them. 
we have to learn how to recognize and handle our emotions instead of just suppressing them and pushing them away and just praying and asking God to remove them. We need to learn why it is we're feeling these things. Your negative emotions, fear, anger, shame, guilt, those are not your enemy. They are merely just cues like, hey, hey, something's going on. I'm feeling this way. Hey, hey, don't ignore me. (laughs) Don't ignore me. And when we do and we shove those things down, it will not help us in the long term. This is when we see people who then, because they stuff all those things down, and I have been guilty of this in my life, then start to feel anxiety. Then they start to feel depressed. Maybe they have an affair on their spouse. Addiction and alcohol or drugs to cope with all these emotions that they've been suppressing. And so that's the place that we don't wanna get to. And if you do identify yourself in that place, I also just wanna tell you it's okay because the whole goal here is going to the core and the root of these things. No matter where you see yourself in the spectrum of what we're talking about here, it is never too late to do the inner work. The first step of that inner work would A, be deciding if you need to speak with somebody, but if you wanna take those initial steps on your own, then take out a feeling word list. You can Google feeling word list and write down five of those emotions that you're feeling. Sometimes it's really hard for us to identify what emotion it is, but when we can see it on a list, you're like, oh wow, I'm feeling disappointed or I'm feeling confused. Um, maybe I'm feeling shameful. And so when we have that emotion word list, then we can see those different emotions. Then we can start to process through those things. So journal out five every day. Start to learn yourself and what you're feeling and why you're feeling that way. Another good thing is learning your primary and secondary emotions. We also have content on that. But the secondary emotions are the emotion that you can see. And they're usually protecting a harder emotion that we don't our mind is trying to protect so the secondary emotion is like anger um you know you're feeling vengeful like those are the emotions that you're gonna see somebody have displayed in front of you and the primary emotion you know behind that anger could be you know i'm feeling foolish or i feel disappointed in myself and those are the emotions that we hide and try to protect from ourselves but we really have to dig deep into those things and then figure out the messaging that we have created behind those things because we adopt these messages all throughout our life without even realizing it and so you might believe that you're just not good enough or you're not smart enough or you're not creative enough and you just can never get it right and that's not how you're supposed to live that's not how god intends for you to live And so doing the work and making sure that you don't stay in the spiritual bypassing and you don't stay in these negative loops is so important for the rest of your life. And I promise you it's worth it. It's worth all of the work. And if you need help, if you want a coach to walk alongside of you one-on-one, then click the link in the description below. But for now, stay tuned for the next video, guys. If you want to join the support group, that's also going to be linked below. But let me know, what do you think about spiritual bypassing? Is this something you've seen in the church, at work in your own life? How are you guys overcoming that? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.